The Small Business Show, episode 309 for Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Happy New Year, everybody! <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show, the show by, for, and about small business, where what we do here is small businessing as a verb. Yes. It's an yes. action. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Yeah. In Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Welcome to the first small business show experience of 2021. 2021, man. Yeah. I I hope everybody had a great holiday, all things considered. Uh, Excited to be with you for what is surely going to be a terrific year with some tremendous success uh, for all of us. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to actually, I'd like to, to, to maybe add a little transparency here and, and pull back the kimono a little bit. I'd I'd love to talk about how our businesses were, including this one, but, but not just this one, how our businesses were last year and what we're both predicting and planning for this year, because those are two very different great things, idea. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's great. Um, and then at some point in the middle there, I will uh, take great pleasure in telling you about our sponsor issue at issue.com slash podcast. That's I S S U U.com slash podcast. But we will talk about that with more detail uh, shortly here. But in, in terms of the, um, in terms of the year, so you you want to start? You want to bounce this back and forth? I mean, I, I don't know the right way to do it. I'm happy to Let, start. Let's, let's talk about the the show first. Okay. Let's talk about small business show. Perfect. Um, and it, uh, you know, you just so folks at home, but Dave kind of well, not kind of Dave runs the business side of the show. Uh, he he manages you know sponsorships and different things that, like that. Uh, and we both work together to to plan content. I typically manage interviews and come up with show topics and create notes and all that, you know, show notes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, we're we're looking at, as we talked about on the episode uh, two weeks ago, the last one we did, as improving the show, trying to improve the metrics, make uh, the show more useful to you. And quite frankly, more useful to us as far as getting feedback. One of the biggest uh, uh challenges I face with this show is I love the show and I love the feedback I get during the show from Dave and from the guests and that kind of stuff. But what I am missing personally is the feedback offline is getting that, uh, you know, our listeners to interact with us more. So we're going to work on that. And Dave, you know, I posted uh, a bunch of different ideas, just kind of brainstorming things. And, you know, I would love to in the next week, have you take a look at those, Give me your tips, feedback. What do you think? And then maybe next week we could do a show all about what we'd like to try and then revisit and see what works and what doesn't. And see what, yeah, that's right. It, I mean, businesses, it, it, you know, we talk about how we love mistakes and, and it's true because my favorite part about making a mistake, I don't like every part of making a mistake, mind you, oh, sure. <laughs> but my favorite part about it is that when I've, once I've made the mistake And it doesn't take long after I've made the mistake to be able to look back and say, oh, okay, here's what I need to do to fix this. And I love knowing what to do. One of the hardest things as an entrepreneur is is knowing what what to do next. Yeah. Well, that's the hard part about this is in, in, unless we get feedback. uh, Well, I guess our feedback is going to be those metrics, uh, the number of subscribers that hopefully continues to grow, uh, sponsors that are interested in the show. And and I I guess I I may, I don't know, uh, at the end of all these adjust these changes and adjustments that we're talking about, I may just have to embrace that as the feedback. But I got to tell you, it's so different than the other business uh, channels and things that I'm involved in because I get a lot of really direct feedback. Yeah. My sales increase, I get customer feedback, my followers talk to me on a daily basis. Um, and that's very rewarding. And it is something that I miss from, from this show. From this. Yeah. And this show yeah. is, is unique for me in that regard too, as we talked about last time. So yeah, feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know what you think. But um, yeah, in, in, in terms of this business, uh, and I want to talk about all of our businesses because I, yeah, I do too. I, I, do I too. think it's important 
especially because of, you know, the, we're in the middle of this pandemic and, and all of that stuff. And it certainly is affecting some of our businesses and some segments of yeah. our businesses, but not all of them. And, and I think it would be, you know, nobody likes to talk about when, you know, things, even ups or downs, like nobody speaks in, in anything that is relatable. And so we're going to change that today. And I, I'm, yeah. what I will say right out of the gate is last year, small business show revenues grow, you know, top line revenues were down 50%. So we're half of what it was the year prior. And, yeah. and, and so that, let's just leave that where it is. That's right? the kind of feedback I don't like. <laughs> I know, but it, but it, it is, but, but you know, I get it. I get it. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's, it, that's a hundred percent sponsorship revenue. Uh, just right. right. It, so, and, and I have some reasons for this, which we'll get into it in a minute here, but you know, I run four other, three other businesses. Uh, we have one business that I don't talk a whole lot about. Um, it is effectively a get paid to site GPT site, which is a site where people come and they do like things like surveys and things like that. And, uh, and they My get paid signed and, up uh, for it uh, over the weekend. Oh, well, well there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in that business, it might not surprise you has is up well over a hundred percent during uh, you know, in 2020. It, again, I don't want to, I want to evaluate all of this. So I just want to state where things are. Our, our backbeat media business, it was interesting. We had a huge dip in the middle of the year, but we ended the year with sales up 3%, but cash down, cash flow down 15%, uh, you know, mm. ca like yep. cash in down 15%. And again, I, I want to, I just want to state all this and then talk about it. Uh, at the Mac Observer, we're up 40% year over year. Um, now my music right. revenue is down, of course, uh, down about 80% year over year. Yeah. No great surprise there. Right. But family time, again, there's no dollar amount associated with it, but it could yeah, be argued as priceless. Good to right? recognize. Yeah. 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 Family time. It, I, I, it was hard to do the math because there are no dollar amounts on it, but it, you know, looking at, we, well, we got an extra four months together as a family yeah. that we, cool. we never thought we would get again. Right. Because our kids had yeah. left for school, things were moving away. And then suddenly we were all home together again. And that was something we all appreciated uh, as a silver lining, but, but it was, it was completely unexpected. You know, we never thought we'd have it again. And so that was up, you know, 150%, maybe even 200% over what we would have expected and the same with personal projects, you know, up, yeah, uh, great. you know, I, I've gotten so much done on the personal project front and on the business project front. Right. So, so that's, that's where things are. Do you have the oh, I have a lot. types of numbers to share? <laughs> yeah, so I absolutely I, do. I, I would love to hear your numbers and then I'd like to sort of synthesize all of it and say, okay, why, what do we attribute yep. that to? So, yeah. yeah, go ahead. So I have a, you know, like you, I have some different, uh, channels and different businesses that uh, kind of bring into my revenue stack. And and my really changed, you know, a few years ago when I sold uh, my largest business. Right. And so then kind of changed from, you know, an employer manager with a bunch of employees and then kind of became stepped back into the uh, solopreneur. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I have a, I have a fashion, I have a couple of fashion related businesses. One is a luxury watch business that I've, that I've managed for almost well, over a decade. And, and it was a, it was a very significant part of my personal mm. revenue stack for a long time. Yeah. Um, but it has trended downward for the last three to four years, just in general, not related to sure. the, the pandemic. Although, the pandemic pushed it down about another 20%. Okay. So that's um, all I want to like, like yeah. again, I, it's really hard not to qualify the why at the same yes. time that we, because we never like to deliver bad news. Right. So we yep. always like yep. to couch it. So, okay. So your luxury okay. watch is off 20 points. Okay. Yeah. You're over you. And my okay. handbag business that I started after <clears throat> selling tech restore was, uh, up, but, uh, you know, only about 2%. So we're okay. all basically flat. And I have some, obviously, sure. some interesting trends about that, too. The biggest hit I took was our vacation rental business, as you would imagine. Uh, uh, and some of our properties were down as much as 40% yep. from 2019. 
Okay. And I have some feedback on that too. All right, great. Uh, and I have one more. Okay. Oh, all right. So my pub, my uh, I started the oh, publishing business right. back in the fall of 2019. That you know really didn't get sure. t- uh, taken off until that. And my first book that I published, Poshmark Unlocked, um, that talked about the experiment of starting a company on my phone, which I've I've documented ad nauseum here on the show, um, and that really took off in the second half of of 2020 up. Uh, you know, over a hundred percent and sure. continues to really hustle and have some feedback on that as well. Um, Interesting. So I, I have a lot more information to talk about and yep. I'd love, we'll go into the whys uh, after we hear from or the good people uh, are good sponsors today. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly it. I just wanted to take a second and, and, and just talk the numbers and then yeah. talk the why, but uh I'm going to make you wait because I have this really important, (laughs) this really cool thing to tell you about, which is issue at issuu.com slash podcast. So look, you live to create, right? But you don't live to worry over the little nitpicky details involved in putting the final touches on content, right? You do what you do best. And now you get to let issue handle the rest because issue is your all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital publications from brochures to magazines, sales collateral, and more. It's perfect for marketers, creators, educators, designers, publishers, salespeople, or really anybody who wants to make eye-catching content. An issue makes it easy. You just upload your PDFs and files and issue transforms them using your vision and their own customizable templates to create the content you want. So you have the content you want to make it look pretty. That's where issue comes in. You create it once and distribute it everywhere because everything is optimized to post on your website and social platforms like Instagram and Facebook. And they can even help you make animated Instagram stories. And you can start using issue today for free. Or if you sign up for a premium account, you'll get 50% off And you got to go to issue.com slash podcast and use promo code SBS. That's ISSUU.com slash podcast. Use promo code SBS at checkout for your free account or 50% off your premium account. One more time, issue.com slash podcast with promo code SBS. And our thanks to issue for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. So let's talk about the why of all of these things, right? So some of these things are obvious. The, the my you know my music revenue your vacation rental business revenue yep. each off you know 40 to 80 percent like i think it's pretty easy to attribute those yeah, those are simple to, yes. to the pandemic but but absolutely but i oh and and for me that's absolutely true but i i hate to apply external excuses it, it, although it is 100 percent accurate here the other thing that's accurate for me is the reason that I my music revenue is off eighty percent is because I played eighty percent less last year. Now, yes, I, that could have happened if I simply chose not to play. Right? It wasn't well, my choice, yes. but it is one of those things that's important to remember. And and the reason I put it that way is once the opportunity to play, or once for you, the opportunity to rent your homes out again comes back as a reality on a regular basis. We need to make sure we re-engage with those things and oh, we need yeah. to make sure that we stay engaged even right now and not losing sight of what's happening in the industry or with me with music, still playing, still keeping in touch with all of my musician friends and, you know, cultivating those relationships so that when the time comes, I'm ready to capitalize on that renewed opportunity. And I, it's just one of those important things that I, you know, that, that is, that it's there. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's not my I, choice. I would also but, comment yeah. and I don't, yeah, and I don't know anything about performing and that, that aspect of, or that type of business, but I would say if that was a more significant uh, revenue stream for you, you would have focused on finding alternative ways to get that same income back. Correct. Versus, okay, we got to put this on hold, you know, keeping in touch, keeping our, right. uh, you know, your gig gab podcast going, uh, keeping connections open, ready for the rebound. Um, and I like that I, ready I, you know, for the rebound. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah you got to yeah. be ready for it. Yeah. You have to be. And, yeah. and for us, one of the, we were actually doing okay with the, the vacation rentals because yes, when the first kind of lockdowns came in March, February, uh, March and April, we had to cancel some guests and it was significant. However, once thing, you know, kind of opened up again, at least for, uh, local travel or, or local vacations where you could drive to versus getting on a plane. Sure. We had a significant uptick in business that and I was ready to report that we were going to have a, you know, a banner year. Uh, but we just have encountered a, a second, you know, significant lockdown here sure. in California sure. where our properties are. And especially over the holidays, which are our big earners. And we have some properties that, you know, rent out for a thousand or twelve hundred dollars a night. Uh, and so we had to cancel holiday uh, plans. And that's our significant revenue time of the yeah, year. Yeah, so that that's can, where that 40 percent. Th yeah, that could have cut half of that 40 percent out if it yes. if it all went the right way. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yep. We would we would have been up for the year uh, had we not just in the last month or so had to, you know, cancel all these guests. That makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. OK, so that's yeah. OK. So that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. With our with our get paid to business, the one that did really well, I, I can attribute about half of that to the pandemic. Uh, y you know, because people are right. home and oh, doing, okay. right. Like uh, so many people, yeah. the way that they use these sites is they're like, you know, the time that they spend otherwise idle in front of a device. And so many people I know sit on their treadmills with an iPad or something and mm, just do these sure. little surveys or do whatever, you know, and, 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 or play these little games or whatever. And, and you just, it's it, you, the more time you spend on the site, the more, is earned and therefore the more you get, cause there's a rev share, right? That's, that's just yeah. the way it works. So, so 50% of it is that the other 50% is we came into this year pretty strong and moving at a really good clip, developing new things. You know, we, they always say that luck is, you know, opportunity meets preparation. And, and that was certainly true for that business this year. Right. We, right. we had been yeah, doing a ready. lot. We yep. were ready. We, of course we didn't know there was going to be a pandemic, uh, but, but it hit, you know, it hit at the right time. And at the wrong time, we were spending a lot at the beginning of the year on growing the business. And then within about, 30 days, maybe less of, you know, lockdowns happening. So March 15th ish, right? Maybe March 20th. Um, within about 30 days of that, our suppliers, our big suppliers, all our partners really, uh, all moved from net 30 for us to net 90. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. we pay our users net zero, right? That's yes. the way the business works. So we suddenly had to sit and look, and I have been... <laughs> You know, there, there are times where I feel like I don't do a whole lot with this business. And there's times when I do a whole ton, but my, my job there is to, to keep the business organized properly. Right. And, and of course, a lot of, there's a lot of guesswork in that. Cause there's, you know, and there's, there's some fundamental things that you just do, but otherwise it's like, well, how do we manage our cash? And, and we had stockpiled some cash because we knew that we had this exposure out there. And, and at some time, at times there were, you know, friction, there was, it caused friction between me and my partners. And I said, no, we need to stockpile more. The, the friction all went away when our partners moved to our, our business, our business partners, not my, you know, partners in the business, but our, our, yeah. our, yeah, the, the companies with whom we work, when they moved to net 90, it was like, Hey, guess what? We have that war chest. Good yeah, news. Smart. We get to stay in business through this because yeah, it would have meant great. just shutting the doors. It, it, like it, it literally would have been one or the other. There, there was no real in between with that. Uh, Cause I don't think we could have gotten a loan on March 25th to bridge that over. So um, yeah, you know, that makes that sense. Works. It's so good, it's good foresight in thinking that, you know, yeah. you need to have, have access to that capital, in whatever form capital. it is, what, yes. whether you've got your, you know, uh, you've got it in the bank or you've yeah. got a line of credit you can use in an emergency, uh, you know, whatever it takes, you need to be able to get, get you need to have stuff. it. And the bit, that business was too young to have a line of credit that would have, truly floated us across. Um, mm, yeah. So, yeah, so it was, but it worked out like, every, every, you know, everything was fine. That's cool. Um, yeah. yeah. We had, we had just recovered from, we had made some, no, no great surprise. We'd made some mistakes in our first year in business. What? <laughs> yeah. And we, re, like, we really made a bad one. We, we did this, um, we had this thing that we had set up that was a real loss leader for us. Turns out we made some miscalculations. It was a much bigger loss leader 
than, than we had planned uh, because it was more successful than we had planned more quickly. And so people were earning more than we had to give them. And we had uh, to, we had to take a PR hit amongst our users and just say, okay, look, we can't, we can't do this, th this way. And we're going to only be able to pay you out, you know, whatever. Uh, I forget what it was, it was you know, but it wasn't a hundred, a hundred, a hundred cents on the dollar. It was you know less yeah. than that. And we had just finished paying all that off uh, and real, you know, maybe in December or something. And then, and then we had a couple of months to, to, you know, refill the war chest and then thankfully you know we had that time so so but that's that's yeah. where that business yeah. came from backbeat backbeat media is interesting because our sales we pushed over the top we really worked hard in december and uh and we got our sales up three percent year over year now that's basically flat but when i look back and i i see that basically q2 was down 35 percent yeah, it's significant. It, you know, that yeah. it, we really raced toward the finish line and we have a great momentum here. But I, as I said, our cash flow is down 15%. Well, the reason for that is our um our our most of our partners pay us uh you know, they're ad agencies, so there's a whole flow of how the money goes from client to ad agency to us. And so there's a, there's a net 60 to net 90 that exists in that business too. Right. And, um, and so with most of our sales pushed toward the back half of the year and having missed out on that, you know, end of Q1, all of Q2 scenario, um, our cash flow is down because a lot of the stuff that we, that we booked, it will be paid, you know, in the first half of this year or, right. you know, it's just how, sure. it's just how that shift works. But the good yeah. news is it qualifies us in that business for another uh, PPP loan when that opportunity comes around. Cause you have to have been, you have to have one quarter of 2020 where you were down more than, I forget what it was. 10, 25%. 25%. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. It was 25%. Yeah. Yep. And we were down 32 or something, like I said. So it was like, yeah, hey, we're going to do the same with our vacation rental businesses because yeah. they, they dropped. I, you know, I didn't do it last time because it actually picked up pretty quick. Mm. Um, but I am definitely going to do it this time because we took such a hit in Q4. Totally. Um, for sure. For sure. Now, now let's, yeah. let's talk. Well, let, let's do um, this show last. So let's talk about your, uh, obviously, your vacation rental business it's uh, your watch um yeah reselling so business that sounds like it was declining anyway it was and i don't think it has anything to do with uh with covid i mean like i said it used to be a, a very significant business but i think uh, you know and i've speculated over the years but unfortunately i had time to see it uh you know going down and and make changes and start new things but uh to to take its place but i i think you know, the Apple watch and other smart watches really have taken a hit. I think there's the, there's less distributors, less retailers, and there's just overall less demand for these types of, uh, watches. Yeah. And, you know, so it's just, there's just less inventory out there. And we, what you'll find is there's less, um, that means there's less opportunities. And I also, it's similar to what happened, happened with Apple you know, when Apple was really having lots of problems with their supply chain and distribution and all kinds of companies were selling Macs and it was kind of, kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, those were, that was a heyday for a guy like me that <laughs> could take advantage of all those inefficiencies. That, that's sure. what I've done my whole life is looked at and going, well, that's a, not a good way to do it, but right. let me go help these guys fix this problem. And, and I could do that. Uh, but as Apple got better and better and better, there were less and less opportunities. And the same, I think, has happened in the watch business with the manufacturers have taken more control of the supply chain because they have also seen demand diminish and they're not pushing into so many retailers that kind of do whatever they want, you know, willy nilly with pricing and returns and those kind of things. So there's, there's just less opportunities in that, in that market. Okay. And it, it continues to totally to makes sense to me. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. I'm a mechanical watch guy. Uh, mm -hmm. but I have not added to my collection in the last five years. And right. if I, it used to be that my Apple watch was my, was the watch that I wore more often than any other one watch, but it was not on my wrist 50% of the time. If that makes sense. Ah, I see. You sure. know, it was my most popular watch for me, but I would wear others cause I enjoyed it. And you know, 
in the last year, I was thinking about this the other day, I, you know, I can probably count maybe 15 days where I've worn a not Apple watch. I was like, mm, huh, that's should, interesting. I be, should I be selling yeah. these things? Should like, you know, uh, I got to, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, this doesn't it, it, surprise me what you're saying. Yeah. And I, the other thing that, that happened along the way is, is corporations, big, big companies got tight and, uh, uh, I mean, they got more control over the the customs and importation aspects of this these products. Sure. Uh, particularly companies like Rolex and Cartier. Well, you really cannot. I mean, you can, but if customs uh, opens up your box and you have Rolex watches or Cartier or Omega, that kind of thing, you, you're going to be in a world of hurt if you cannot provide direct documentation from the manufacturer that you are authorized to import that product. Wow. And yeah. And so there are, there's a whole, uh, even, even if it's used stuff or, or, or Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really? matter. Yeah. Doesn't Cause matter. you'd think and, and it only, like, it only takes yeah. a few times to get those seized for you to go, Oh wow. That's, that's very expensive. Yeah. And now you <laughs> yeah. can certainly yeah. go and fight and go to this customs court, which I have done, but it is a long, long process and it's very expensive. Um, and so there are a uh, a whole group of gig workers that uh, basically wear these watches, and as they get on a plane, they fly somewhere, go through customs, uh, take it off, and get back on the plane and fly home. And so we've employed some of those people to bring watches from Hong Kong and different places. Wow. And it's it's a shame that these big companies can control the. That especially on a piece, a used piece of uh, yeah, you know. I mean, I can see brand but, but new do. stuff oh, and yeah. like that. There, there's that would make more. It would. It would. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's kind of one of these things where they just have this blanket policy. Yep. And they understand uh, nuance, right? right. And uh, if they just kind of have this flat thing, and and these big companies love it. Uh, Apple does the same thing. Uh, you cannot import anything from. China into the United States that has an Apple logo on it. If you, if they open your pocket, your the container up or your packages up, it'll get seized, and they'll say, "Oh, all you need to do is give us a letter from Apple authorizing you to import their copyrighted material." That's <laughs> yeah. it. Simple. Yeah. Good. yeah simple. simple. Yeah. Let simple. me just call yeah. all my friends at Apple. Yeah. I'm sure one of you them will it. send me the letter. You yeah. Got it. So, yeah. 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 So, wow. but you know, that, yeah. That's so. That's I was prepared for that, and I continue to be prepared for that. On the handbag front, one interesting observation is that uh, when the pandemic first hit. Our high end bags, these are like thousand dollar plus. They they sold really well, and they actually sold better. The low, the mid to low, uh, maybe three hundred to to yep. nine hundred dollar bags, just stopped and and didn't sell. But the high end really picked it up. But what we saw then in in this second lockdown in in Q four, uh, is that the low to mid really increased the high end bags dropped about 30% and but the low to mid uh increased about 40 48% okay. uh, in the second so it's a different type of buyer um wow. and so maybe I'm speculating of course but maybe the a demographic in this second lockdown that's feeling the hit a little bit more is a higher end or higher earner uh, or more disposable income that doesn't have access to that this time right I don't know. Right. Well, it's, okay. It's, it's so you brought us, but... you brought us into our, our, you know, next section here, which is the predictions and then plans, right? Uh, for yeah. this. Yep. And, and that is one of them. Now that what you, what you just said about the handbag business. So that makes sense. All the reports are that, you know, the, um, the people who had, you know, well, let's call them white collar jobs. I'm oversimplifying yeah. here, but, but, you know, the people who had jobs that could easily be turned into remote jobs if they weren't already, uh, their consumer goods spending is up over 6%, right? Y you know, yeah. uh, and that was true even before Q4, which is the holiday buying season, y you know, but what was down almost, you know, almost 6%. So, so a little bit less than that, but down was all of the services, right? Vacation rentals, yes, dining out, like all of those yeah, things. Concerts, concerts. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Don't please. Oh, yeah. I, know. Uh, I know it hurts a lot. Big um, part of life. Yeah, yeah, big part of mine too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm surprised we've never gone to a show together. That now that yeah. like uh, knowing how we both. Well, I mean, we live three thousand miles apart. That's why. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it like it, so it doesn't surprise me that the super high end stuff 
did really well because it was like, well, we can't that summer vacation just got canceled. Yes. You know, right. Yeah. The, the, the the we go out to eat four times a week. Well, that got not I don't. But I'm just saying for, you know, I'm, I'm painting a picture out there. For instance, somebody goes out to eat four times a week. OK, well, now you just got 16 meals a month back in your pocket. OK, well, you know what? Buy a handbag. It's fine. Go, you know, knock yourself out. Whatever. Does it make yeah. you happy? Yes. OK, well, we're stuck in our houses. It's the middle of a pandemic. You know, take the dopamine hit. You're good. Right. So. Yes. Yes. So that makes sense. And then, of course, the 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 drop as the Christmas buying season comes in to the lower yeah. end stuff coming up. OK, like all of this can be explained and and definitely related to the pandemic in that way. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I so I think yeah, so. Yeah. But uh, I, and, and it, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, well, I, uh, one of the trend going forward for me for this business is uh, like the watches I know are trending out and I, sure. I there, there's nothing I can do with that. The bags. Uh, I, what, one thing that's happened during the pandemic is a lot of retailers uh, that were selling this kind of product, which is primarily where I get it from, and distributors that distribute the product where this comes from, yep. they're not dealing with it anymore. And maybe they're closing stores, you know, uh, because as a retail market shifts, I if I'm not able to find new suppliers, then what will happen to me next year is supply strength constraints we're gonna sl- are going to slow the business down. Right. So... I'm constantly looking for new suppliers. One of the interesting supply uh, sources that I recently came across are cruise lines because mm-hmm. they're shut down and they have uh, retail. Not only do they have retail uh, stores on the ships, they do fashion shows. Right. I guess I, I didn't really know much about this because I'm not a cruise person. Yeah, I've seen fashion um, shows on cruise ships for, for yeah. Sure. Yeah, we, it, yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I just, uh, landed a, you know, pretty significant, uh, 500 piece, you know, deal through a cruise line distributor. And I'm, yeah. And I'm just like, okay, just at first I couldn't figure out where they were coming from. And then I kept looking, looking, okay, great. I I get it. And I was like, fascinating. Yeah. Once you Um, understand it, then it doesn't seem so so sketchy anymore. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So finding, you know, these new suppliers going to be real important for me. And also my interest in this business is going to, depend, you know, really impact how it does. Right. Um, it's, it's great. I love it. I love the followers I've been able to create, you know, we've got about a half a million followers now. Wow. And, that's great. uh, yeah. And, and it's cool, but there's some aspects of it. I really just, I don't enjoy as much anymore because I've done it for the last three or four or, you know, three or four years. Yeah. And I'm going to have to make a decision. It's like, okay, do, you do I offload people? this? Yeah. Yeah. Do I bring somebody else in? Although I vowed never to hire another employee again, I could certainly get a contract person to uh, come, you know, do this, the aspects of it uh, that I'm not as excited about, which I think I'll probably wind up happening. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. No, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I, it, the, the looking at, at 2021, which is where we are here, I, you know, I think, I think it's probably going to be April before we start to see enough of a sort of trend downward in the negative impacts of the pandemic that that things will start to really begin that reopening. I don't think it will be the end of that. I think that's the beginning of that. Right. I, yes. I think with yes. the, the vaccinations and, and, and stuff that's happening now, I mean, we just had the holidays, which was, a, you know, we knew was going to be a mess for, for cases and all that stuff. So fine. Yep. Y- you know, um, I say fine. I, I don't mean to be flippant about it. It's just, there's not much more to say about it is really what it is. Right. It's just, yep. Yeah. And, and then we, you know, we've got these vaccinations happening yeah, everybody's complaining they're not happening fast enough. Nothing would be fast enough, to be Correct. fair. But we're fortunate to have a vaccine right now. The fact that I know about a dozen people, including my neighbor right across the street, who have like had the shot already tells me that we know how to get it from the lab into someone's arm. Now, yeah. all we need to do is make that process more efficient and scale it. And guess yeah, what? Right. We're really good. Like not me. I mean, I, I'm okay with it, but not for that. You know, don't give me any credit. But we're as a people, we're really good at figuring out how to scale things. And so I'm I'm really curious to see where we are at the first week of February, y- you know, in terms of right, that sure. vaccination rate. But the other thing is we are being smart about who we're vaccinating in a general sense, and it's the people that have the most exposure. And therefore, the people that are more likely to get infected. And so I think this even this first 10 percent is going to have a massive impact 
you know, a month later in the numbers because we're we're hitting the spots that are hit the hardest. So that's why I think by April we're going to see these transmission numbers much lower even though it's possible you or me hasn't been vaccinated by April, right? You know, or haven't, hasn't right. even had the opportunity to be vaccinated by April. Yeah, so, I think that's a really important uh, thing to benchmark is to, is because, and, and we can experiment, right? Because we right. have some states that are just like, hey, first come, first served. If you're in, you, you want to, you know, obviously we're going to do all the healthcare workers first. Correct. Totally makes sense. It yep. seems like to be a blanket uh, concept, which is yep. obviously smart. Makes really sense. And then, sense, yeah. They're just like, come get in line. We're going to give it to whoever. And then we have other states that are making decisions based on different priorities of who yep. gets it yeah. and using terms like equity and this different things about sure. uh, who should get. And and so you now you'll be able to look and we'll, say, okay, we'll have data. Who, which, yeah. yeah, which state has been more successful? Uh, is there delays or is this? Is it more efficient just to get in line? So I think it's great. And I think that A-B testing is just a huge part of, of, of the success of uh, our country in general. Like, oh, I, of anything. Yeah. It, it is our first pandemic. We don't know the answer. You know, we can, we yeah, can guess yeah. we have, we can have gut feelings. We can even have data driven feelings about the answer, but, oh, but, yeah. but we don't have data. Don't have data. No, we don't. <laughs> so, no, we don't. Yeah. yeah. So well, yeah, I'm, thing is, I'm, I'm curious. Is what, to me too. And one of the things like I, I, I have some, some thoughts, you know, 2020 was really a tremendous learning year for me. Uh, and I think a lot of us and, and really kind of related to that is, you know, I really learned that you can find an expert to confirm your own cognitive biases for just about any subject. Yes. And so can everyone else, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so I think it's really one of the things I learned about, like we were talking about testing and stuff is that is being able to look beyond experts uh, so-called experts and dig and find the data uh, and yeah. not be, uh, you know, with blinders on just to hear, you know, find out what you, what you think you want to hear. Yeah. Well, it, the, you know, the problem is it would be far more efficient to be able to find an expert that was just going to tell you the right information as opposed to what you want to hear. But that's not the world <laughs> right. we currently it's live not. in. Right. It it's was not. the world it's we not. used Maybe to never. live in. I don't know. Never again. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not so sure. I, I think we were more uh, trusting mm -hmm. and didn't quite. Uh, I think we've we've been made aware of these cut these our own biases much more in the last, True. you know, four or five years. Yeah. And I think in the long run, it will serve us better. But it's it's certainly painful to have to go through it right now. Right. Yes. Yes. Very much. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. I think uh, I think the I think it's going to be Q4 of of this year, 21. Yeah. That's that where things are like going to be back to rocking again. Yeah. I, 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 I would agree. You yeah. know, and I think we will, it, it, you know, we will look back on this 10 years from now as 2022 being the year where things were just like wide open again. And even though I yeah. think it's going to start in different ways in different places in, this year, I think it's going to be it, it will be seen as widespread next year, the comfort level. Right. Because it's it's not just are we logistically and medically and all of that ready? It's OK. Th there's going to be a lag time between when we are actually ready versus when we feel like we're ready. And it's going to take some people are already like, screw it, yeah. forget it. Right. And but oh, yeah. but but th the lion's share of people are going to want to see some proof, right? Like, does this vaccine actually work? Do the numbers right. go down? Right. And so there will be a lot of this, Hey, you canaries go into the coal mine for me. Yes. Let me know correct. how it is. And then I'll come back and, and let you know, you know? And, and so the, I, I think it's going to take a little time, but I also think that 2022 will be seen as the beginning of our version of the roaring twenties. Nobody's going to want to be yeah, I, I, home I, I would anymore. Agree. Right. Yes. Everybody's yes. going to want to be out. the The yeah. value of being in in like in the presence of other people is something that Tremendous. I think we were losing. Like, like we oh, were, we were yeah. all getting sick of each other, and now it's like, okay, you know, wait, I'm not that sick of you people. I I don't mind. I want to be around you people. You know, <laughs> like I think those yeah. things are. Uh, that's right. Yeah. No, I agree. I and agree. I think Bitcoin will double by the end of the year. That's my final prediction. I, that wow, that's good. For yeah, I would yeah. like to hear. That's that's good. I, I would agree with you on the Bitcoin thing. I, I, I'm i a believer in the million dollar coin. Same. Um, yeah, I really Same. am. Um, I do want to talk about our, our 
our publishing business, uh, okay. mine and ours combined, yep. and, and just talk about those trends. Sure. Um, I mentioned that, you know, the second half of 2020, you know, my Poshmark Unlocked book just took off. Uh, and I think people were looking for ways to make extra income and finding it up on Amazon and those in those categories. I mean, that book continues to rank high in the small business and entrepreneurship categories. It's typically floats between 125 and 500, which are... It, it may sound like that's a high number, but considering it's there's not. 4 million books on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we've learned v- the hard way ha- how tough it is to get... Uh, although our mistakes book got to number six. Yeah. Um, and I think that's great. Uh, we had mixed results with that. We made some good mistakes. We learned a lot about publishing and marketing, primarily what not to do. Well, we <laughs> we made it into the Amazon valuable. top 10. We did. We can we say did, that. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> our partnership guide kind of is a non-starter. Didn't do much with it. We have our employee guide that has the content that's already curated. Uh, there's a lot of it. Yeah. It needs to be edited and formatted for publication. Dave, you're going to take that one on. Yep. So you can publish as the author. So I'll be the co-author on that one due to some the kind weird. of limitations on the way the, the Amazon publishing stuff works. Yeah. Um, it, it, what I'd love to is next week is to pick a publishing date and a pre-order date for mm. that book that we okay. could talk about on the show. Yeah. Based on, based on your schedule. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm getting ready to publish my second book in this unlocked series that I'm starting. You know, Poshmark one did great. I'm doing uh eBay unlock that just went on pre-sale and it's going to publish in February. So for me, I think the publishing is going to continue to grow and become book, a significant book publishing. Part. Book publishing, yes. I, yes. I, I just want to... Because that's we are currently publishing a podcast, yes. right? You we have it. websites that we publish. Yep. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. But book, book, the book, book publishing, publishing. Yep. yeah. Uh, I think it's going to continue to grow and be a significant part of my revenue stack for a long time to come. Uh, I think it's a how great is niche. Your, you didn't mention your books in the, in the how is your year section here. Like, how are those doing? Yeah, so... The, Poshmark Unlocked is up uh, uh, over a hundred percent since oh, you know I, I, I published in September. Oh, you of did say you said your publishing business. Yeah. That's that's your book. Sorry, yes, you did say that's that. that. Yep. Yeah, sorry, you got yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, yep. And so, with we, you know, I, I have a, a bunch of ideas for uh, you know uh, in this Unlock series related to small business and other things that I've done. I love the positive feedback that you get. I think it's a great yeah. uh, way to build followers, and I hope to bring that into the you know our small business guide you know stack as well. So yeah. the hard part about that business is fi- is building habits um, to be successful, and I think it would be a great topic for a future mm-hmm. show is how to mitigate the negative habits that we all have, especially me, uh, and how to promote those positive habits by coupling them with rewards and different systems that I've been working on. So we'll, we'll definitely oh, be like revisiting this. that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah one, of, one of my, I and I, I've had this on the back burner through most of Q4 because I, I just didn't have the bandwidth to, to go through the hiring process. But uh, new hires are a big thing for me I- here in 2021. Uh, we've already brought somebody onto the GPT business. We're, we're, in fact, we're adding another one um, that'll that'll really help expand what we're doing on the sort of the social media front there uh, for us at Backbeat, but very much related and and including what we do here at the Small Business Show. Uh, I mentioned it on the on the show once that we're we're going to be hiring a somebody to do podcast promotion, marketing, yes, some social media, but but just taking all the content that exists in this show and sh- and and other shows that we have and getting it out there in ways that new listeners will be able to find and sort of chew into without having to listen to an entire episode. Right. Like I, I think yeah. there's, there's ways yep. to attract new listeners and, and we're not doing any of them, which is great in that yeah. it makes it easy to go start doing them. Awesome. Um, it's going to be some big numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Big, big, uh, percentages. Yeah. 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 Big percentages. Yeah. Cause it starts yeah. at basically zero. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so like, I mean, I'm really excited about that. And then I, I have, I have not, really ever gone out of my way to present myself as an expert in any of the things that I'm an expert in any of the, the speaking gigs and, and 
you know, various other promotion stuff that has happened to me is exactly that it has happened to me. Right. I, I people find me. And I mean, I do, I, we do this show. I do my Mac geek gab show. I mean, so in that sense, I am a practicing expert, but I am not doing any of the PR work to put myself out there. And, sure. and I have, uh, again, just because of good fortune, I will be, I mean, I have the, I have the, <laughs> I'm the right person for the job, but I didn't seek out this job. I will be teaching a class at the university of New Hampshire starting in February called the business awesome. podcasting. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a blast, but I'm going to take that as sort of the, the, the stepping stone and really kind of cement myself out there as a podcasting business expert and, and very likely leveraging the, you know, the new hire that I just mentioned that, that will be able to sort of, you know, help with that and keep me on track with that, uh, doing our, our PR. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Because yeah, it, it, there's great. no reason not to sort of leverage that. I, you know, I, I get frustrated when I see other, other people getting credit for things and it's like, you know what, I, I should be getting credit for that. And it's like, well, but I need to be out there. Like I, I need to throw my hat in the ring and I don't. And so you do. Yeah. It's, it, it's it, another, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it's just it's one more thing that you have the skill set, but like you say, you're not a you got to get somebody to maybe help you promote it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, get out there. So. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Great. So, and then and you know, and then I'm really excited for what we're what we're doing with this show. We don't I, we don't have that plan yet. We have plans, we have ideas, but we haven't put anything into place. And I, honestly, part of the reason for that is. I, certainly for me, and I think I can speak for you, we're, we're sitting here hoping that we will hear from some of you at feedback at businessshow.co to tell us what you like about this show, what you don't like, what you would want out of this show instead of what you're already getting or in addition to what you're already getting. So uh, so tell us that we're right, that we're wrong, you know, that, that you have a good idea or that we already have a good idea. Let us know. Feedback at businessshow.co. That's good. Hey, and we have a brand new website. Uh, you should go yes. to businessshow.co to check it out. It looks awesome. Uh, it, it, I think it looks great. And uh, we're, we're continually tweaking with it. And uh, I love it. It's simple and right to uh, find each episode. It's got a yeah. great search. Uh, Makes life easier and, for us, too. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be yep. awesome. Cool. Excellent, man. Well, I've always enjoyed getting together. It's a great first show. I'm looking forward to uh, exploring new ways to... Uh, make the show better and uh, yeah yeah I'm, year. i yeah i i feel like there's well i know that there's opportunity for this show it's it's that you know nearly unlimited upside um yep so yeah so so let us know what you think but even if you don't just keep listening y you know it, the second the, like the really this the the order should be reversed but i'm i'm going to go with it uh the the my first request of all of you would be send us a note. Let us know what you think. My second request would be tell somebody else about the show. Now, really, I should be telling, asking you to tell everybody else about the show first, because that actually spreads the the love a little bit more, but we want to see some of the love come inside here. So, so let us know what you think about this show. Yes, that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, that's what I got, man. You got anything that's else? What I got too. All nope, right. That's it. Have a, have a great week. Thanks for your time, for listening, for your feedback, uh, feedback at businessshow.co. If you do like the show, we'd love to have you leave a review for us at wherever you listen to your podcast, go up there and tell the, tell the other listeners why they should be here with us each week. Yeah. 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 Make, making sure everybody knows about what we're doing here is huge. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you very kindly folks for your time today and uh, we'll see you next week. Make sure you keep living that charm life. 